Hello and welcome to the show. This week's Fail Race versus the Community, we were to go racing with B-Class front wheel drive cars. Our first race will go to the Hockenheim Short Circuit. Turn 1 is uh, often a bit of an interesting one. We certainly saw a few cars get launched across the inside The inside curb is actually really very, very vicious along there. If you clip it, launching cars onto two wheels, often sometimes just completely clean firing the cars off the track. On the exit, a bunch of cars got themselves into trouble running too wide with a wheel on the grass, putting them uh, quite sideways. This Nissan Duke, I expected the Dukes to be a really rather silly choice uh, for, for this racing actually held their own remarkably well as he goes around the outside of the Civic. It's uh, quite a, a very fast corner, especially on the first lap with cold rear tyres. The Duke, though, would, uh, would get the position further back, and as you can expect, on the uh, early laps there was uh, rather a train of cars. Wherever you looked, there were cars running close to uh, together. This Mini was struggling a little bit for speed, as much as I love the Cooper Works Mini, I couldn't build a particularly good one for B-Class, and this one here was coming under fire from all sorts of uh, various vehicles, this time out from a, a Fiat 500 as they run down towards turn one. As I said at the start, turn one is a, is an interesting corner. You see the Civic get launched on two wheels. The Fiat was launched on two wheels. Uh, you really got to be wary of the curbs down there, and running wide is certainly not a good idea with such a vicious curb. The Fiat makes the most of it, though, with the Mini being a little bit slow off the first corner. Fiat will have a dive up the inside and will claim the position. And this was the kind of battle that was going on uh, pretty much everywhere. As I said, the Duke was actually holding its own and was making progress. The the field, catching up to the back of a Scirocco as they were run down towards the hairpin. Again, you can see, you know, there was there was plenty of uh, plenty of cars were running running close together at uh, at this circuit. These two had been relatively close on track for a couple of laps. The Duke not quite able to find a way past until Volkswagen went a little bit too defensive, ran across the curb on the inside, got his car up onto two wheels, left the door wide open for the Nissan to uh, to drive up the inside. Yeah, when you're trying to fend off. Uh, fend off a quick car, you can't afford to make any mistakes and uh, just that little running wide it can easily cost you a position or two. The Mini continued to a struggle coming under pressure uh, once again, this time from a Fiesta and a Civic was in close attendance. Fiesta thinks about having a dive at the second to last corner. I love the second to last corner as an overtaking opportunity, a fantastic corner to have surprise dives. Uh, up the inside around there, Fiesta couldn't do it, didn't really matter though. Fiesta has a huge amount of grip around the outside of the final turn. That is a, a rare manoeuvre to, uh, to see done. Don't often get cars managing to survive around the outside there. Fiesta gets launched onto uh, two wheels across the inside of uh, turn one. Mini gets a little nudge from a Civic. They all manage to uh, make it through though. Yeah, around the outside of the, uh, the final turn is, uh, is quite an impressive one as a Duke. There's a little bit of rally cross at the end there. I had led for the most part in the early stages of the race, but an unfortunate incident with a curve would spin the Lancia and dump me back down to third. I was catching up to second place when he had an unfortunate incident with a curve, got hugely sideways out of the final corner. That gives me an opportunity to draw up alongside, but I'm stuck on the outside for turn one. Not a fun place to be. I managed to hold it there, incredibly nervous of going near that, uh, that outside curb there. Still, the Integra is on the inside as we run around the second corner. I thought I was going to be in trouble here, but I got enough acceleration. The Fulvia, phenomenal acceleration in this car. I can get it out after being around the outside of two corners, managed to get the move done, which uh, I was quite pleased with. This Lancia, a really rather solid car. The leader had got a little bit bored with his inherited lead and uh, decided he wanted to make things interesting with a final lap battle. Now me and the Integra are more than happy to, uh, to oblige for that one. And I threw everything I could at the Civic in this final lap. My Fulvia was really good. I've never built a good Fulvia before. This one though is really very, very fast. Fantastic B-Class car that uh, that I got here. The Civic, I saw my opportunity. The Civic ran a little bit wide. Uh, the Civic was pretty damn fast as well. Ran wide, left a gap for the Lance to try and squeeze up the inside. The problem is, even if you do get alongside there, I'm stuck on the outside for the hairpin. The Civic's going defensive. The Integra, perhaps not quite as quick as our cars, but he's there ready just in case we have uh, any any silly moments. My favourite of the overtaking spots, a big dive at the second to last corner, wasn't quite on. I was just a little bit too far back to uh, try anything against the Civic. Again, the Civic ran it risky. You see the back of the car very nearly let go across the kerb there. I pushed it. Both me and the Integra pushed it massively 
around the final turn. Both of us on the Astro Turf. Neither of us could do anything about the Civic, though. The, uh, the Honda would take victory from my Fulvia in second, with the Integra getting a third place. Further back, and it was all on for uh, the fourth position between a Civic and Mazda 3 and the Nissan Juke. The Mazda managing to get up to that fourth place drives, out drags the Civics and around the outside, but runs wide into the next corner. The Honda will cut back and get the position. They bump, they slow each other down. The Juke's around the outside of the Civic as they run now down towards the hairpin. An unusual battle over this uh, fourth place between a Mazda 3 and the uh, Nissan Juke. All the meanwhile, they're being caught by a focus as well. In the background, as they leave the hairpin, Mazda gets a little bit of wheel spin. Juke just gets a better run off the corner. He's going to have a big dive up the inside. The Honda nearly makes it three wide into the second to last quarter. Honda's on two wheels. Mazda's out wide. Mazda hits the curb, gets very, very sideways around there. The Civic's on the inside. Mazda's trying to carry all of the speed that he can. The focus is right there on this final lap. The Mazda has the acceleration, but can't quite do it. The Duke would get a fourth place. A fantastic final lap battle, but between, between all of these. You see the dangers of the curbs, though, around here. They they really can be very, very vicious. Race and number two, and we would go to the uh, Sonoma Short layout. Uh, a track, I, I love this track. Turn one and two area can be a little bit dodgy uh, around here, I will be honest. And sure enough, see a few cars a little bit of bumping through this uh, first section. The front pack get away quite cleanly. Further back, it was a little bit more chaos. I'd started well down the order in, in this one. And mo basically, my first lap was try to avoid the chaos that was going on. A Mini had managed to uh, make a little bit of a breakaway at the front. The Celica we were following was immediately coming under pressure from another very, very quick Lancia. The Lancia trying to get up the inside. Couldn't quite do it at that point, but it was only a matter of time. That acceleration of the Fulvia, they are so very, very light with a relatively decent power figures and relatively decent sized front tyres do make them a formidable opponent and the Lancia would uh, get up the inside of the Toyota. I mean, you can already see the lead pack have got things, you know, it's relatively nice and spaced out and relatively calm on this opening lap. Toyota pushes it a little bit too much around there, but yeah, relatively calm. Wasn't the case for me. In my very fast Fulvia, I was in the middle of, well, just about everything that, uh, that was going on further back. Lots of cars to, uh, to try and find ways past. My first target was a uh, Renault Clio. But when you're in a group like this, even when you have a very, very fast car, you've got to be careful that you don't go too aggressive trying to find ways past. It's very easy to try and make a move stick, get it a little bit wrong, and suddenly find two or three cars come soaring past you. It was getting incredibly crowded as we come over the crest of the hill. I was thinking of making it three wide and thought better of it. There just wasn't going to be the space. Sure enough, up ahead, a Clio and a Fulvia uh, end up getting together with the poor Fulvia ending up in the wall. I was still battling side by side with uh, with an Integra down here. Like, places changed so fast. A Civic dived up the inside, a prelude swapping places. There's another Integra that lost about three positions in that corner and then would try and make them up through the next bit. The Clios had a little bit of a bump. The pink Clio go very, very sideways. It's absolutely chaos through here, managing to, uh, to avoid <laughs> pink... The Pinkleo gets launched across the grass, manages to keep it out of uh, out of trouble. Well done, well done for keeping all of that together. I found myself get to the inside of the <laughs> Clio up ahead of me. The prelude follows me through. It was uh, mayhem in this race. It was absolutely crazy. Some of the the mid pack stuff that. Uh, that was going on. My Fulvia, as I said, was quick and was making it through the field. I was bringing a Prelude and an Integra with me, so I found a way past the uh, the Golf, and then it was immediately coming under pressure from the Prelude down towards the hairpin. The Honda having a big dive at the hairpin. Good, good overtaking spots at the hairpin. The rest of this track can often be a little bit tricky to uh, get passes done, but having a big dive at the hairpin is a relatively solid space, and you can see behind this lot the uh, the chaos that was going on. The Prelude tried to go round the uh, round the outside, couldn't do it. The Golf had all the acceleration. The Integra's up the inside and gets the pair of them as they run up towards turn one. The Prelude tries to have a go. I don't think the Integra quite realized he was there. They touch. Because the car's a front-wheel drive, you can boot it and get away with it. In the end, no real harm done except for the Prelude loses the position back to the Golf as he gets passed on the run up the hill. Yeah, quite a frantic, uh, quite a frantic first few laps. In, uh, in this race. Further back, the racing was pretty good as well. Mitsubishi Eclipse against another one of the Integras. 
as we run through this turn one. Someone's smoking their tyres up ahead. The Eclipse thinks about going around the outside, changes mind, cuts back to the insides, get a better run off of that first turn. It puts him alongside, but the move isn't done as they come to run up the hill. It's side by side between the two cars, but the Eclipse is on the inside as they cross the crest of the hill. <laughs> Car up ahead getting some sideways on the dirt. Many cars end up in that dirt over the course of the race. The Eclipse would uh, get the pass done in both of them, running a little bit wide through the uh, through the next corner. I was on I was on a mission with the Fulvia. I wanted to get a podium. Had a lot of work to do as we came to the closing stages of the race. I was catching up to the third place Salika. As I said, though, overtaking can often be a little bit of a pain around here. Helps though when you have so much acceleration as I did in the Fulvia, getting up the insides of the Toyota, and there's just nothing that he can really do to fight off around that corner. And again, I've got the acceleration to get out the other side so that he's not in really any position to have a dive into the into. The the next turn and as you can see behind me I was very much bringing uh, an Integra with me as uh, I had tried to make my way up through the field as we came on to the final lap I was very much on a mission this time for second place the mini that had uh, started well was not quite as quick as the likes of my Fulvia and, and the Integra and we just got up to him on the final lap I thought about having a big dive in the same place that I got past the Salika couldn't quite make it happen but again with a good run off of the corner up the inside into the next turn was good enough for me and then the Mini had a lot more to worry about having kept that second place for pretty much the entirety uh, of the race he was now coming under increasing pressure just to stay on the podium in the closing stages as the Integra was now taking a look trying to find a way past you can see the size of the gap that I made up in just a few corners the Fulvia was a seriously seriously quick car around here the Mini tried to carry as much speed as he could through this turn just pushed his luck a little bit too much trying to fend off the Integra and in the end, the, the Integra was just too fast and would get away up the inside as well. A little bit unfortunate for the Mini losing his podium there on the final lap. At the front, and despite some poor driving on the final quarter, it was another Lancia that was to go on and take a victory. Uh, started well up the grid and could just vanish away. Uh, both me and the Integra that would come in third behind me were setting, we were all setting very, very similar lap times. It would have been a fascinating battle if all three of us had been together on track, but this Lancia got such a huge lead early on that, uh, yeah, there was very little we could do about it. But it would be a Fulvia 1-2 with the Integra coming home in third. Our third and final race would go to a, a rather soggy Silverstone National Circuit. Uh, I was kind of curious to see how these uh, relative, I say relatively high-powered front-wheel drive cars would fare in the wet. First turn here is a little bit, a uh, little bit safer than the uh, than the previous couple of tracks that uh, that we have uh, run around. The next quarter, though, is where things get uh, a little bit scary uh, down here as we kind of cut cut off through the Magazine Beckett section. A bunch of cars managed to cause themselves an awful lot of trouble. Some cars, uh, <laughs> I don't quite know how everybody managed to run wide through that uh, through that section. There is a horrible puddle on the inside that if you clip it a little bit too much, probably wasn't helping matters. Again, it was very much a case of if you could survive the uh, the opening melee, you were going to be, uh, yeah, tend to fairing quite well. The Scirocco managing to, uh, to make the most of it. Uh, the cars that, uh, well, just about managed to uh, survive through everything on the uh, on the opening lap would form a really rather really rather large group of uh, vehicles. It's safe to say there was um, a little bit of bumping going on with these cars as everyone was trying to figure out the braking points and so on. And of course, if you clip a puddle, you're going to end up in an awful lot of trouble. It is a huge puddle down on the inside that uh, this Volkswagen was uh, having to worry about a mini behind him. There's a, there's a Dodge Neon in there. There's a Golf gotten very sideways, uh, having run a little bit too wide. The Chrysler, uh, the Dodge, sorry, is trying to get up the uh, the inside. The Volkswagen's got such a huge amount of straight line speed, though, can fend off the uh, fend off the Dodge and actually catch the mini before they get towards the next corner. Thinks about having a big dive up the inside. Doesn't quite have the brakes, of course, of the tidy little mini. Uh, starts understeering a little bit. There's still the Dodge on the out side again much like we saw at Sonoma there were these great big groups of cars that were tussling for position uh, the odd bit of trading paint certainly was uh, going on through here as I think a Mazda 3 is joining in a Clio's getting involved as well there was yeah the, the odd bit of, uh, of bumping here and there but no major damage was really done to uh, any of the cars which is uh, yeah, it's always good, always good when you could say that um, <laughs> about the race. Yeah, there's always likely to be a little bit of bumping. 
Uh, towards the front, I had uh, I had started well. I actually made a little mistake, dropped off the track that put me back into a second place. I was trying to fight my way back towards the uh, towards the lead, going for the outside on uh, on a Scirocco towards turn one is a pretty scary maneuver. The Scirocco on the inside kind of understeers a little bit. I kind of back off as I don't really want to get caught out wide on the curb, and the grey Scirocco would make up two positions in one corner and get himself to the lead. A very good opportunist move to uh, find a way past both me and the other Volkswagen. Thing was, my Fulvia was once again really very quick. This battle had actually allowed a limo to uh, to catch up. Yeah, that is a limo running around in fourth at uh, this stage. Uh, our little battle had allowed the limo to, uh, to catch up. My Fulvia, though, had a huge amount of uh, straight line speed. Again, coming down this, it's a relatively short back straight as well here at the, the National Circuit. It's more than enough, though, for my Fulvia to draw up alongside. I get it past on the inside. The Volkswagen just doesn't have the grip to hold that maneuver around the outside. And you've got to be very wary of the puddles around here as well. I am a little bit on the outside around the final quarter, but I know the Lancia has the acceleration off of the turn, and uh, that would uh, put the Fulvia back up into the lead with a couple of Scirocco's uh, still giving chase. As I said earlier, it was uh, yeah quite a frantic race further back with some really rather large groups. Often you'd kind of have like a group of five cars, a big space, and then another group of uh, five cars. Of course, the, the cars at the front of the group are battling, slowing each other down. The cars behind would quickly catch up. So yeah, you would get these uh, surprisingly large groups as a couple of uh, Clio Williams were having a... They, they kind of bumped ever so slightly, and then the puddles made everything ten times worse. They still managed to make it side by side through the first quarter. Now one of the Fast and Furious Eclipses has uh, caught up to uh, join in the fight and that's got all of the straight line speed to a breeze past the Clio as they run through the next quarter both of the Clio and the Eclipse run a little bit wide Eclipse gets slightly sideways um, I think maybe across the, I don't know there are puddles down there quite easily across the puddles especially if you have a little nudge with a, with a car ahead and you know these being front wheel drive cars they often they often will have the back end let go when things get a little bit unhappy uh, side by side with the Clio down the back straight Mitsubishi really in the place that you want to be for this next quarter it's quite tough going around the outside there uh, especially when there is such a big puddle out sort of out quite wide as you see <laughs> the uh, the white Clio had uh, put a wheel a little bit out of line and dropped back through that pack uh, one of the quick cars making his way through the field, a Honda Civic, had caught up to the back of the limo that was uh, that was holding on to uh, third place. Wasn't going to hold on it for too long. The Civic has a big dive up the inside, a little bit too big of a dive as he can't quite get it stopped. Manages to get the the pass on. Limos are incredibly difficult to overtake because of their sheer size. So uh, yeah, you do have to be quite uh, quite brave to get the pass done. The limo does actually come back at him around the final turn. I was quite surprised to see the limo managing to get himself to the inside, but the limo is rather large and rather heavy. Just doesn't quite have the acceleration to really do that much uh, about the uh, the Civic. At the front, I had a relatively quiet race after the uh, the opening few laps. Once I got back into the lead, the Fulvia was just that little bit too fast around here for anybody to uh, be able to do anything about. Really rather good car. I re really thoroughly enjoyed driving this uh, Fulvia. One of my fastest B-Class cars I think I've built. It is, uh, yeah, a really solid vehicle, and I was glad to finally have built a, a Lancia that uh, worked. I took victory with the uh, Scirocco coming home in second, Civic managing third, and the Limo coming home in fourth. Pretty good going for, uh, for a limo, certainly. Further back and still the huge arguments were going on over various positions. The, uh, the Mini very, very fast through the corners, but was struggling down the straights. The Dodge pushed it too much on this final lap, running wide and would fall out of uh, contention in this little group. Yeah, the Mini quick through the corners, lacking straight line speed and running wide is not going to help matters when there's a very, very fast Volkswagen wanting to uh, come past. The Volkswagen would easily outdrag the Mini before they got towards the next corner. The Mini, good under brakes, but uh, tried a little too hard. He couldn't quite get it stopped. Uh, the Volkswagen still making it around the corner. Fine. The Clio looking like he's going to pick up all of the pieces, but he's stuck on the outside for the final turn. Clio good through the corners as well. Manages to hold it all the way around the outside. He gets a good run off the turn as well, but it's no match for the Volkswagen's straight line speed as they run towards the line. VW would uh, get the position from the Clio with the Mini uh, having a little bit of an unfortunate final lap uh, on this one. The Mini's didn't fare too well on the, uh, the final laps of these races. Yeah, these cars were, were quite a lot of fun. There are quite a lot of large groups of cars battling as well 
throughout the various races, which is uh, which is always a good thing. Yeah, plenty of action going on throughout the field. Anyway, that is it for this week's Versus the Community. The next one shall be on Thursday the 21st of January. We are going to be running C-Class Japanese cars. If you would like to uh, sign up and take part, then you can via our forums. There will be a link in the description. Find the Ferris Versus the Community section and you'll be able to sign up in there. But uh, that is it from me. Thank you very much for watching and until next time... Uh, goodbye.